Hello, everyone, and welcome to the One Stop Co op Shop. This is Colin, and today we're going to start Adventure 2 of The Titan Awakens. Now, there's one thing I want to mention before we jump in. From our previous playthrough, if you remember the quest Leopold and Alexander, I gave myself five campaign tokens for that. Eh, that's wrong. In solo, I only would gain the large number, three. If I was playing cooperatively and I had someone assist me with completing this, the one that had the most, uh, would have done the most of it would gain three and the other one would gain two. So he'd actually could gain five campaign tokens in total, but that's not the case here. This is solo only, so we only earned three. That means I lost the one extra campaign token that I had and I removed protection from my deck. That means I only have four cards that I drafted from this previous playthrough uh, to this current one. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at our new quest. So we have a mentor here, an ancient teacher, offers to share her wisdom with you. When drafting, discard three cards from the upgrade draft area to place mentor in the dungeon. While one of your heroes is adjacent to mentor, you can draft three discarded upgrades, and that's any hero. So if any of my heroes are adjacent to mentor, if I draft a discarded card and I do that three times, I would gain two campaign tokens. The monstrous hunt here, a gold archon is bringing renegade monsters to justice. All I need to do is defeat five monsters to place the gold archon in the dungeon. Then, after a hero defeats a level 2 or higher monster, place that enemy token on their hero card and then transport it to a space adjacent to them to complete that quest. And finally, our big enemy, the Death Fairy Queen. The Death Fairy Queen desires the hallowed places for her own. Draft three green dungeon tiles to place the entrance of this uh, of her dungeon uh, out on the board. It's called the Unseelie Court. Then we have to defeat her and we gain four campaign tokens. As I mentioned, I have a total of four cards already drafted into my deck from the previous playthrough. So I will start here. My hand size is seven. My discard limit is three. I've created my tile stack, six level ones, four level twos, and two level threes are two level ones that are already out. We've got some goblins and some wargs. Oh, these guys look kind of tasty because they're on a green tile. If I want to take out that death fairy, drafting that tile looks pretty good. I then have my five cards in the draft area. I've got Adaptable, Sense Secret Door. I remember I really wanted that one last time. We have Reposition, Eldritch Portal, which is one of the story cards, and Ambition. The Eldritch Portal that permitted your passage through the void to this ancient time has reopened briefly. Will you be able to make further use of its intense power? Ooh, I don't know. I want to. <laughs> We have our four heroes here. Don't forget, we get to look at our top solo AI card here. Oh, we're going to lose three cards from the draft area. Ugh. Let's draw up to our hand size of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's see what we find. We have Determination, great for Krolt. Oh, we have Burning Desolation for Gypsy or Yipsy. I'm going to call her Yipsy, you guys, just because I like that name. <laughs> Dark Recall, Point Blank, Rapid Fire. Oh, we have Kaith. We have Track. Yeah, uh, this is a great, great hand. Just a quick reminder on the game rounds, we will have four cycles. Each hero will be activated one time per cycle. That's how the game rounds work. When it's your turn, you can do a move and an attack, or you could do two moves or two attacks attacking different enemies. So I think I'm going to start off with Mirabelle. Mirabelle is our awesome gnome who was accused as a traitor, but we decided to believe her that she wasn't. Her attack is two, she's got two dodge, movement of five, and health of eight. We're going to start off by playing track. We can draw one card after we may choose to spend up to four more movement to draw four more cards. Let's first see what we get. We get the bronze golem. I don't think I'm going to spend any more movements, uh, movement uh, cost to draw cards. I think I'm good. Instead, I'm going to use one of our movement points to do our maneuver. So we have four left. Now this turn we have plus one range attack. We also, after we make our first primary weapon ranged attack this turn, you may immediately make one additional primary weapon ranged attack against the same or a different target. We also have our battle tactic. You may make ranged attacks against enemies that are in adjacent space this turn. <laughs> and the first one we attack will get plus two to our range attack. We've used one movement so far. Movement two, we are going to open up this door right here. It is an unlocked door, so just cost us one movement. And we have now drafted our first green tile. So I'll place one damage on the Death Fairy Queen. After I've done this three times, we can place out the Unseelie Court. 
we'll grab our next level one tile and we have a bugbear and a goblin and it looks like a level one challenge token. With those puny goblins right next to us, we're going to spend our third movement to move right to here. Now we're adjacent to them. When we were here, we were not adjacent to them. Now we are. Let's play some cards. Before we do that, let's look at the goblin enemy cards. So they only have two health. They have no armor. Their ability is all about attacking, so we don't have to worry about it while we're attacking them. So right now, our base attack is two, plus one because of that maneuver, which is three. We also get plus two attack on our first attack. We're going to take out this goblin right here, and we normally can't attack range adjacent, but we can because of that battle tactic. Point blank, right in front of his face. Then, we will also go ahead and attack this one back here. I should point myself this way so I can see him. Uh, so when I came in here, we also are going to attack this goblin and take him out. We only had a three attack, but he only has two health there. That will be it two xp that we just earned remember after we've earned eight xp the next round we can put out the level two upgrade cards we're then going to play both Kaith and the Bronze Golem. Now you can see they're both pet cards. Normally you can only play one card of each type per turn. However, with a burst of strength, you can see down here, you can do a burst of strength to be able to play the same card type once per turn. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to lose two cards for it. Determination and Dark Recall. We're going to play both of those face down like so for our burst of strength so that we can activate both of these cards. The pet here for Kaith will deal six damage up to four spaces away. That'll take out one goblin, no problem. And the bronze golem will actually attack twice for four damage. Uh, that definitely will take out the other goblin. So all four goblins gone and four XP earned. I would say we just defeated four monsters. I almost feel bad for them. <laughs> That's four out of the five we already need to, tr to trigger a monstrous hunt. We'll move to our drafting phase. I definitely want to get this Eldritch Portal, but it's not going to be discarded at the end of this turn. Reposition is. Reposition can be used both by Krolt and by Mirabelle, because let's make Mirabelle stronger, right? So we'll spend one of our four XP, and we're going to grab Reposition and put that into our hand. We'll then replenish that card right here with a shield block. Oh, bummer. So that's going to get discarded. That'll also move us up to drafted cards of five, still a hand size of seven. I can now choose to discard and draw, and I think I am going to discard reposition. I don't need it now. I only have one card in my hand, uh, the Burning Desolation, so I will draw six cards. We will get the open hand attack for two, then we've got a uh, hack for three, then we have uh, Minerva for four, we have Meditate for five, we have Drain Vigor for six, and one more, we have Magic Bolt for seven. We're then going to activate our AI card. We're going to discard these three cards. No enemies on the board, so we can't do the and then, and we can't do the otherwise. So I will just simply discard this. Let's flip our next one so we know what's happening next time. Okay, we're going to lose these two cards from the game, and some more enemies will activate. We'll discard all three of these cards, replenishing them with, we've got the Ring of Command, Ooh, that sounds cool, that's a treasure card, we've got Slumber, and our third one is Ice. Based on what I'm seeing on my hand, Eipsy is going to go next. Don't forget, she's an adversary with Krolt. So during the beginning of the even-numbered rounds, I want to have them in different rooms. Also, they cannot move between uh, through each other like you normally can with heroes. Eipsy is going to start by opening up this archway for one movement. She has a total of four movements, so she'll have three remaining. And then movement two will have her move right into here. We'll replenish the tile. Let's see what we have. We have another green tile, just an ogre and a level one challenge token. The wargs here have three health. They have one dodge defense. They also have an ability when defending add plus one combat die to the wargs uh, dodge defense. And that can be between zero and three for defense. However, that's not really going to matter to Eipsy. She's going to use her Burning Desolation. That gives her a six attack. Remember, that replaces her normal attack of one. You may divide this attack however you like among any number of targets within your attack range. Our range is two to three. This attack ignores the targets any type of defense. So no defense at all, just dealing six straight damage split among enemies that we'd like. Each of those wargs have three health, so two fireballs, boom, boom, took them both out. They each will give us two XP. That's four more. That's all eight that we need. So next round, we'll already have the level two upgrade cards. Nice. 
I'd say we most definitely have triggered the monstrous hunt already. Defeat five monsters to place this out on the board? Yeah, I think we can do that. However, we can't place a quest token in the starting room or any room with heroes in them. Well, <laughs> that's all of them. So instead, I'm going to have to place this quest token on one of the two tiles that could be drafted. If I draft it and get it out on the board, then I can actually do it. I think without a doubt, I'm going to be drafting this green tile. So let's put this here by both doors. We'll now move to the drafting phase. I'm definitely going to draft this Eldritch Portal. Even though I'm not gaining a card into my deck because I'm drafting, I'll move up to here. That means my hand size now is 8 and my discard limit is 4. Let's also replace that card and we'll grab the Energy Spear. Oh, another story specific one. I've already read the story card to you. We just need to go to Titans Awaken 1 and 2. You explore ways to exploit the portal. Place the portal token on your starting dungeon tile. If your hero ends her turn on the portal, the hero may choose to return briefly to your own time. Afterwards, remove all the hero's wound tokens, remove the portal token, and gain one campaign token. Erase the story card and cards 1 through 2. Consult card 2 for an alternative way to manipulate the portal. The portal can traverse space as well as time. One of your heroes may choose to play a control spell for no effect while standing on the portal. Afterwards, the hero and or any allies in the same room can move to any one room in the game as long as there are enough empty spaces to hold them. Remove the portal token, gain two campaign tokens, and erase the story card 1 and 2. Oh, that seems cool. Well, it seems like to me we get to decide how we want to use that portal and we don't have to decide right now. First thing, I did forget to use 1 XP to actually get that card, so I still have 2, 4, 6 XP to use for future turns. I place the portal in the starting tile as close as I can to this door because I'm assuming as we move out, we might have someone move back into there to then be able to teleport themselves anywhere they want. That'll complete our second turn. Let's go ahead and discard and draw. I'm going to discard two cards. That means I have four cards in hand. So I'll add the Ruthless Commander for five, six. We'll have Counter-Strike. Then I'll shuffle these up. And we get to draw two more cards. There's only one that we won't have, the Magic Bolt. And we have Drain Vigor. We have two heroes left to activate, and I really, I could do either one. I'm probably going to do Eminon. Uh, yeah, that's who I think I'm going to activate next. Of course, before we do that, we activate our AI card here. We're going to lose these two cards, replenish them. And once again, no enemies on the board, so we don't have to do any of that. Then let's go ahead and flip our next one. This one, we're just going to lose some more cards. Oh, if we don't have any enemies on the board, one of our heroes is going to have to take three damage. So I might want to leave one on the board. We're going to lose from the game the Sense Secret Door. Apparently, I don't care about that. <laughs> and Ice. And we're going to replenish both of those with, oh my gosh, the Death Fairy Queen, another story card, and Critical Strike. Our Human Monk will go next. He has two basic attack, three dodge defense, moves five with seven health. And the first thing we're going to do is play a Meditate, so he'll have four movement remaining. Afterwards, you may remove one wound token from yourself. I don't have any, but he gains plus two to his basic attack. So his basic attack now is four instead of two. Eminon will use movement two to move here. Movement three, he's going to open up this unlocked door, and we're going to bring out that Ogre. We do have a challenge token inside, and there's nothing that I can do about it. There's an enemy in this room, so I can't spend a movement point to reveal it. So I'm probably just going to move in there and deal with it. Let's not forget that is the second time we've drafted a green tile. So our Death Fairy Queen is almost out. And we'll flip our next one. Okay, we've got two red ones. Ooh, what is that? That's going to be a Wyvern. Oh, cool. And another level one challenge token. Ogres are a bit savage. I don't think we saw one in our last playthrough. We have 5 attack total, 2 armor defense, 3 total movement, 6 health, and it makes 1 attack against every adjacent enemy in all directions when it attacks. We have 2 more movement for Eminon. Eminon's going to move into this room. That means we have to reveal this. Okay, it's just a regular treasure chest. It's not even a locked treasure chest. Oh, you know what that means. We can, for our final movement, just move right on top of it. 
If you find a regular treasure chest, when you step on it, you immediately gain XP equal to the treasure chest level. Well, since it's a level one uh, tile, it's a level one treasure chest. You can see that level one right there. So that means I'll gain one face down XP. So this is gonna be coming from that 12 stack. So I will gain this. It won't help me for buying cards, but it helps for your score. However, we're not really worried about that, but <laughs> it was easy for me to get to, and now I can attack that ogre. This might not be the best idea because I'm going to have to deal with the damage from the AI card, but if I use this battle tactic, it's going to give me plus one to my attack. So my attack right now is two plus uh, two is four plus one now is five. Base attack of five. You may use a single attack to strike the same target twice in a row. Use my full melee attack total during each strike. So that means I'm attacking for five two different times. Well, if we look at this ogre, this ogre has... Uh, two armor. So that means I'm dealing three damage with the first attack, three damage during the second attack. That ogre is toast. That is three more beautiful XP for us. I actually have a three here, uh, but that means that there's now no enemies on the board, which isn't great. I'll then move to drafting. I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total XP. Unfortunately, the two cards that I'm going to lose are the two story cards. So I have to choose between the death fairy queen or the energy spear. I feel like we're going to deal with the Death Fairy Queen as a final enemy, hopefully. So let's do the Energy Sphere this time. I'll spend one XP. I'll grab this card. And unfortunately, we have to replace it with a card we're going to lose immediately. We'll replace it with the Ebon Dagger. Okay, great. No one can use that anyhow. In the armory of the Titan Keep, you recognize an energy spear that reminds you of those that will one day be wielded by the immortal Titan himself. Can you harness its power for your own? draw cards five and six. It will take great discipline for a hero to wield this magnificent weapon. To gain control of the energy spear, one of your heroes must either spend three XP or play an enhanced spell for no effect. Afterwards, place the energy spear token on that hero and gain one campaign token. Erase the story card five and choose either to place card six in your hand or erase it. Here we have the energy spear. The hero who claims this weapon receives the energy spear token. Only this hero can wield the spear. You cannot play a shield during the same round that you play this weapon. <laughs> cool. I'm assuming that Eminon cannot spend the 3 XP because I'd kind of like to do that for him, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'll do it for Krolt. That will be pretty awesome if he has that weapon. Uh, instead, I think here we'll just deal with the loss of cards, and then I'm going to have Krolt take the 3 damage because he's got 10 health. So now he's down to 7 health. Of course, I did this before I drew, but I only have one card left in my deck, and that's the reposition. That is in my hand for Krolt's activation. Okay, now let's look at our final card for this round. Oh, this one we'd have to, uh, we have three cards less in our hand. I definitely think I need an enemy out for that one. We also, of course, have to lose card two and four here, and we'll replace them with Aspirations and Telekinesis. Last but not least for this round will be Krolt. Krolt has three attack, two armor, movement of three and ten health. The first thing I'm going to do is play Drain, Vigor, and Magic Bolt. I'm going to use both of these as a burst of strength. With that burst of strength, I can remove one wound on him. So he only has two this time. Why don't we go ahead and give him another four movement? We're going to use Minerva for our ally and plus one with Maneuver. That's also going to give him one more attack. So his attack level is now four. He has three, four, five, six, seven total movement. Well, we know Krolt and Yipsy do not want to be in the same room. So I think I'm going to have Krolt move this way. He will move one, two, and then he's going to open this door here for three. He's going to grab the room with the bugbear and the goblin like this. Uh, unfortunately, there's a challenge token there that we also don't know what it is. I believe this will be our last level one tile. It is. Oh, and it's green. Oh my gosh. Who are those guys? We've got ourselves lizard men. So this came from one of the adventure packs. You can add in these tiles for any game. And I love that. I've got some new enemies to deal with. We already know what the goblins do. The bugbears here are ferocious, so they have an attack value of 3, 5 health with 2 armor. When attacking, add plus 1 combat die to the bugbear's attack. We've used a total of 3 movement. Let's use movement 4 to move here, but we have to reveal this challenge token. Oh no, it is what we call a pit trap. 
When this trap is sprung, place the pit trap token on your space and receive two automatic damage. That's going to put them to four damage. For move purposes, when you leave the pit, it is like leaving a space adjacent to an enemy. No creatures on this space can attack. Huh, okay. This means Krolt will have four damage on him out of ten health. We've used four out of the seven of our movement. We're going to use two movement to move here, get ourselves out of that pit trap, and then I think we're going to attack this bugbear. Before we attack that bugbear, let's go ahead and spend three XP for this energy spear. To gain control of that energy spear, one of your heroes, that's going to be Krolt, must either spend three XP or play that enhanced spell. Place the energy spear token on the hero and gain one campaign token. Woo, that's our first one. We have one down. We need, in order to win this campaign or scenario, we need eight total. We'll erase story card five and choose to either place card six in our hand or erase it. Yeah, I want card six. Look at this energy spear. It's going to give him plus three attack. It's a weapon. We haven't played a weapon yet. So we can play that now to give ourselves plus three attack. We are at three plus one, which is four. That's five, six, seven. I'm also going to play a hack. That's a total of of eight. Eight attack is more than enough to take out that bugbear. That will gain us two wonderful XP. So yeah, we spent three, we got two back, and we got an enemy off the board. Just so you can see, this is what the energy spear looks like, and although it can be played by any hero technically from the card, this means only Krolt can control the energy spear. Kind of cool actually how that works. For the rest of the campaign, he's the only one that can use that card. We'll now go ahead and draft, and I think I'm going to grab this critical strike. It's just too good not to have. I'm going to replace that with a sacred warhammer. Ooh, uh, I know I've got aspirations here, but that will stay out for next round, and I could potentially purchase it then. I then could discard and draw, but I only have three cards in hand, so I'm just going to hold on to those three. We'll move into the AI card. We have the highest XP enemy readying. Well, the only one that's left is the goblin. We're going to go ahead, and go ahead and have that goblin attack. The character that has the lowest dodge defense, that would be Mirabelle at only two. Normally, we need to flip this goblin over to say it's exhausted, but at the end of this turn, because we're at the end of the round, we'd ready all of them anyway, so I'm just going to leave him face up. He's going to spend two out of his five movement to move here. He will attack Mirabelle for two plus this die roll. Ah, oh, two. So that means she's going to take two points of damage since her defense is only two. And she has eight health, so she has six health remaining. We can then discard this AI card, draw our next one, and this one we're going to be losing the red tile that's out. Uh, we've got just basic attacks, or we could just lose an XP if we have no enemies on the board. And you guys, I'm not usually this bad, but I'm pretty sure I forgot to pay for Critical Strike. So I'm going to flip over this to XP. I've used that one to buy Critical Strike because it costs us 2 XP. We'll then move to the end of turn. We'll ready all of our heroes. There's no poison. We don't, we'll discard all the cards beneath our heroes, draw to our hand size. We're going to move to the level 2 upgrade deck, and then we'll start the next round. We do need to remember that we drafted one more card, so we are at 7 total drafted cards. From now on, we'll have a hand size of 8, and we can discard 5 cards a turn. We have 3 cards in hand, so we get to draw 5. We have our energy spear. We have the dark recall. We have hack. We have determination. And one more, we have Kaith. If we look at our hand this turn, I'm feeling Krolt might be doing back-to-back -back activations. Ruthless Command, Critical Strike, Hack, our Energy Sphere, and Determination. Yeah, it's going to be hard to say no to that. To start round two, let's gain another campaign token, because Eipsy and Krolt are definitely not in the same room. <laughs> Then let's do that back-to-back -back activation of Krolt. Let's have him go first. His first card he'll play is Determination. Draw one card and then draw one card additional for every two wounds that he possesses. Well, he has four wounds, so he'll draw two more cards. So he gets the Bronze Golem and he gets Track. Next, we're going to play a Ruthless Commander. This does not need line of sight. For the rest of the round, you and all allies who activate within two spaces of you may choose to discard a card from your hand, or yeah, their hand, to gain plus one to their movement and plus one attack for the rest of their turn. This means we'll discard Kaith to give ourselves plus one movement, so our movement is four. We needed four movement because we're going to use two to move here since we're moving away from an enemy, and then we're going to unlock a locked door. That costs us one movement, 
plus one more for the level of the dungeon tile, and that guarantees that we can open it. So we're going to put one, uh, the tile here with the wyvern, and that was our total movement of four. We still haven't found a level two enemy, but I think we'll find those once we move to those level two tiles. This wyvern has four attack, three dodge, four movement, five health. It has a poison tail. It inflicts poison wound tokens and can attack one to two spaces away in any direction. We'll then reveal our first level two tile. Oh, we have a warg and a frost giant. That poor wyvern though isn't going to last long. We have critical strike, so our normal attack is three. That adds two more for five. And then we have energy spear adding three more. That's eight. That's exactly what we need to take out that wyvern, which will give us three XP. And yeah, he's toast. However, we're not done with just that. We have not played a pet card. And we have our bronze golem that we drew. That will deal four damage, up an enemy up to two spaces away. We don't even need line of sight. Two spaces away, one, two, that golem just took out this goblin as well. That'll give us another XP, that's four. We only need two more, and then we'll have the level three upgrade cards. Krolt has the most damage of anyone, so I'm going to take these two cards, the hack and the track, and I'm going to play them upside down to use a burst of strength and heal one point of damage. He now only has three damage, seven health remaining. And I have to say, that was a fun turn. <laughs> Krolt really taking out some enemies. Definitely going to buy, during the draft phase, that Aspirations card. We'll replenish it with a level 2 card. We have Tactical Strike. Ah, oh, bummer. No one can use that one. The fervent intrigue displayed in the House of Titan has piqued the interest of a member of your party. Carrying favor with the House of Titan may carry significant rewards. Place the Aspiration token on one of your heroes, and then erase the story card and keep this card for the rest of the campaign. Each time this hero defeats an enemy, you may choose to spend 1 XP to gain 1 campaign token. <sighs> yes. I've got two pretty awesome killers right here between Mirabelle and Yipsy. Heck, I mean, all of them are. But I think I'm going to do Yipsy for this one. She has aspirations. Just because with that fireball spell she can use, <laughs> she ignores armor. She can take out multiple enemies. Yeah, let's get ourselves some campaign tokens. Well, now discard and draw. I think the only card we're going to discard is Counter Strike. We have Dark Recall in our hands. So that means we get to draw seven cards. We have Minerva. We have Meditate, we have Point Blank, we have uh, Burning Desolation, we have Open Hand Attack, two more, we have Reposition, and one more, we'll have Drain of Vigor. My goodness, so many cards! We'll then activate our AI card, discarding this tile, and we'll place out a new one. Ooh, this one has a Gargoyle and two Goblins and a level 2 challenge token. We then unfortunately cannot activate any enemies, so that means we're just going to lose 1 XP for buying anything, so I'll flip this over. And then let's draw our next AI card, that'll be this one. We're going to lose these two cards, potentially having to activate some enemies. If we don't, one damage to each one of our heroes. We'll now move to Eipsy's turn. We'll activate her. Let's take out at least one enemy to get a campaign token. We'll start with our Dark Recall. We'll draw three cards. We have Rapid Fire. We have Magic Bolt. And then I'm shuffling the two cards in our discard pile. We have Counter Strike. We only have one card in our deck now. We'll move ourselves one space here using Movement 2 to unlock a door. We're going to unlock the door that has the Gargoyle and two Goblins and the Level 2 Challenge token why the heck not before that though let's look at our gargoyle four attack three armor four movement five health it has a swoop effect when it moves the gargoyle does not spend extra movement to leave a space that is adjacent to an enemy once per turn he may move through a hero space inflicting two damage to that hero that takes not into account your your armor so even if i had armor of five let's say or a dodge of three i would still just take two damage since it's an inflict our next level two tile, oh, we have a Naga. Finally, a level two enemy <laughs> and a level two challenge token as well. I have no idea if it's true, but I feel like this is the best spell in the game. We're going to use that Burning Desolation attacking for six damage, and then we will use Drain Vigor and Magic Bolt. I'm going to use both of those as a burst of strength to make that attack seven. 
We can split that among any enemies that we choose. How about we do five to that gargoyle and two to the goblin here. That's seven in total. That will take them both out, gaining us four XP. There's two remaining in the stack so that we can go to the level three cards. So we can do that at the end of this round if we so choose. Uh, and I'll gain one more XP on top of that. For drafting this time, I don't see anything that I like, so what I'm going to do is discard Tactical Strike. That will actually mean we'll place one Wound Token on the Mentor. If I do that two more times, I can put that out on the board. And we'll reveal our new one. We have Master Thief. No one can activate that card. We'll then discard and draw, but here's the deal. I have seven cards in hand and one card in my deck, so we're just going to draw it. That's Kaith. Our hand size is eight, and our deck has eight cards. Then we'll move to the AI activation. We are going to remove from the game these two cards and let's replenish them. We will have Dragonfly, that's a story one. And we have a major healing. Oh, I kind of want that because I don't have any healing in our decks. Oh, before I keep going, I almost forgot this. I do want to spend one XP. So I'm going to take one of those XP and flip it over so that then I can gain one campaign token since I did defeat an enemy with EFC. I need five more for this adventure. We're then going to have that a single goblin attack Eipsy, and that should end this activation. Eipsy has two dodge defense. Let's roll this up. Okay, the attack is two plus one, which is three, so she'll take one wound. She actually only has five health, so she has four health remaining. We also need to exhaust this goblin. Okay, let's see what our next card is. We'll flip our card over, and we're going to ready, uh, well, we're ready to gob the goblin right now. Uh, and it would attack once again, it would attack Yipsy. And it looks like here, if we don't have that happen, two of our heroes would take two damage each. For our third activation, Mirabelle is looking great, our next stone cold killer. <laughs> We're going to play Minerva and Rapid Fire. So Minerva is going to give her plus three movement. She has five already. She has eight movement. We'll move down to seven and she gets plus one attack. And of course, she can make her two attacks with Rapid Fire. We're also going to play that battle tactic. You know what that is. Plus two to her first attack as well. <laughs> Let's do this. Mirabelle is going to move one, two, three, four, and then she's going to unlock this locked door. In order to guarantee opening up that door, she has to spend movement equal to one plus the dungeon level. So she's used four movement. She had three left. She'll spend all three to guarantee unlocking this room, the room with the Naga enemy. <laughs> Let's do this. I will place one of these tokens here to denote that she has opened up that door. The Naga enemy has 5 attack, 3 dodge, 6 move, and 6 health. It is an opportunist. The Naga always attempts to attack its target from the back. When doing so, it gets plus 3 attack, and the target cannot benefit from reactions. <laughs> That's so cool! We have another level 2. Okay, this one is a Necromancer. Ooh, and a level 2 challenge token. I need one more movement to move into that Naga's space, so what I'm going to do is use Counter-Strike and Reposition. I'm going to play them face down as a burst of speed or a burst of strength to give us plus one speed. The only bad part about doing this is we're going to have to deal with whatever this is. Okay, it's just a treasure chest. If we move on there, we could gain two XP. Uh, face down XP, but still, because it's not even locked. All right, now we're adjacent to that Naga. We can have some fun. The next card we're going to play is Kaith. Kaith will give us six attack. That will deal three damage to that Naga because it has three armor, or I should say three dodge defense. But now we will gain plus one range attack against that enemy. <laughs> That's absolutely perfect. With that extra range attack of one, we get two more from that. That's three. We get another one from that, which is four, and our base attack of two, which is six. Six damage compared to the three armor. We would do three more points of damage. We just took out that Naga and gained ourselves five XP. Well, I have to say, I don't know which one is a better killer, Mirabelle or Yipsy. Both of them are amazing. So now let's go to our draft. I think I'm going to do Dragonfly next time. I think I want to go for this major healing this time. So we're going to spend three XP to do that, especially because Eminon can actually play this card. So I'll put that into our hand. We'll replenish that with a new card. And let's see, we get Endurance. And then we would discard and draw, but we only have three cards left, and those are the three that are in our hand. 
Oh, and I can't forget this Naga I'm going to put on to Mirabelle. She can drop that off at the Monster's Hunt, potentially gaining us, if we can do that with three level two or higher enemies, another uh, three total quest points. Now, though, we're going to do the same thing we did last time. We're going to ready that goblin. The goblin's going to attack Eipsy, and then we'll discard this card, drawing a new one. Our next card will be removing some cards from the row, which I'm actually okay with. And if we don't have any enemies out, it won't be a problem. That goblin will just stand there and attack, getting another one. That means uh, Eipsy will have two damage now. Eminon will be last to go. The first thing he's going to do is spend one movement. He's going to increase his attack by two. He could remove a wound, but of course he is the only one that's not wounded. <laughs> you know, all the other characters have stuff going on. He is just plain and simple a monk. It kind of makes sense. He's going to do movement two here, movement three and movement four and five. We're going to do here to guarantee unlocking that locked door. And then what I'm going to do is play my last two cards that I have in my hand. I'm going to play them as a burst of strength so I get one more movement. And I'm going to move into here. But that means we have to reveal whatever this is. Oh, it's another treasure chest. Awesome. That means we can do our basic attack of four and take out this goblin. No problem. That will gain us one more XP. I'm really eyeing that monstrous hunt quest. But in order to do that, I need to draft the uh, tile that has a level two or higher enemy. And it's not green. So I'm a little worried this death fairy queen isn't going to happen. So I'm going to spend two XP. I have to spend XP equal to the round number that it is to be able to place that many amount of wound tokens on one of our uh, quest cards. And then uh, I can trigger it that way. So I'm going to spend two of my XP. I'll flip that over. I'll place the third one on here, which means I can immediately put out the unseelie court. I feel like a good spot for that would be right here. I'm then going to spend two more XP to buy the Dragonfly story card. And we'll replace that card with Prince Balan. I saw him last time. An elven druid named Dragonfly roams the halls of Titan Keep. I am sometimes called the Grey, he tells you, for I skirt the border between good and evil, but I do what I must to ensure the future will survive. Ooh, cards 33, 34, 35. I know the queen is wicked, but I offer my counsel to soften the impact of her malice. Even today, she told me that my wisdom would have lived on within the immortal titan, which I consider a positive sign for the future. Do we? I don't know. One of your heroes may seek to share Dragonfly's wisdom by becoming his disciple. To do so, consult card 34. Otherwise, discard the story card and return 33 through 35 to the deck. Well, let's see. To become a Dragonfly's Disciple, one of your heroes must spend movement points that are equal to X. X is equal to 7, minus the number of primordial heroes, which I think we only have one. Yeah, that would be Mirabelle. So that'd be 6. Oh, and uh, elves. So that'd be 5. 5 movement points. Uh, possess. Oh, possessed by the hero. Oh, bummer. So that would be only 1 at most. Afterwards, place card 35 besides the hero, retain Dragonfly's story card for the rest of the campaign, gain three campaign tokens, and erase card 33 and 34. Well, that will end Eminon's turn. We literally have no cards in hand. I used every single one. That's kind of awesome. I don't do that often. So what I'm going to do now is activate our AI, and the only thing we need to do is discard all three of these cards, and let's put out three new ones. The rest of this won't happen. There's no enemies on the board. We have an Assassinator, which actually Eminon can use. Ivory Chalice, anyone can use that. And Devastating Blow, no one can use. Still pretty good. <laughs> That'll end our second round, and holy moly, you guys, look at our board. We only have one more tile we need to find, and we've completed our entire board. Yeah, we have just been cleaning house. I think my goal is to find one more here, take the enemy out that's here, and then we'll go and converge on that uh, Death Fairy Queen. She's not going to know what's going to hit her. <laughs> That should theoretically give me three level two or higher enemies, too, that we can complete our monstrous hunt. Oh, let's hope I'm right. Okay, with that, we'll discard all the cards that are out on the table and we'll draw eight cards. And before I do that, I do want to mention no one can use the Assassinator. Eminon does not have those two symbols. He actually has the Celestial symbol and the uh, Stealth symbol. No, <laughs> but Devastating Blow actually Krolt can use. However, I do already have two battle tactics, so I'm not sure I need a third one. We do also need to reveal our next AI card. Okay, we'd be discarding that green tile level one. If we don't have any enemies out, we'd have to just uh, lose one XP for buying. 
I am also going to move to the level three cards. I don't have to, but I think some fun story event cards are in there. So I'm hoping to find one and maybe we can take on a semi big boss too. I don't know. We'll see if we find one. Let's draw our eight cards. We have the bronze golem. We have determination. We have Kate. We have meditate. We have magic bolt. We have hack two more my gosh we have ruthless commander and our last one we have point blank well i have the most cards for krolt so let's start with him we're going to draw one card and then draw one additional card for every two wound tokens we possess we possess three so that just means we get to draw two cards we have minerva and we have the energy spear oh that's awesome Okay, that's going to change what we are going to do. I was just going to have him move closer. Maybe I'm going to have him try and attack something. Krolt has a total of three movement. Let's double that with Minerva. He now has a total of six movement. Then we're going to play Ruthless Commander, which gives people around us either plus one movement or plus one attack if they choose to discard a card. We're going to discard Magic Bolt, so our movement is seven. We'll use one movement to move here, which means we have to deal with whatever this is. Hopefully it's just a treasure chest. No, it's a dart trap. When this trap is sprung, your hero is attacked by three range attack, which is increased by plus one combat die. The dart trap inflicts poison wound tokens. Ugh. We only have two armor, so we're guaranteed one poison here. Let's roll this up. Oh my gosh, that is two more. So that's three poison wound tokens. That puts us to five damage. We, of course, only have 10 health. <laughs> this isn't good. We're then going to use movement two to open this door. Movement three, four, five. Movement six. Let's try and open that door. And actually, movement seven we'll use to add plus one to our die roll. That means we just need to roll a one, two, or a three. Beautiful. That means we've opened it up because we're going to open up a level two tile. And let's see, we're finding a secret door. We have found that necromancer. <laughs> the reason I wanted to do a secret door is I didn't want to have to move in here in case this is another bad challenge token. So we'll place this here. I also, of course, am on a treasure chest. It's just a regular level two treasure chest. So I'll gain two XP face down. Our necromancer here has a total of six health with three defense, six attack, and four total movement. It has life drain. When the necromancer attacks, his target does not benefit from armor defense. Each time he damages an enemy, remove the bottom wound token so he actually heals himself. However, we're not very much worried about that because what we're going to do is first play that bronze golem. It'll attack him twice for four. He's got three dodge, so it'll take one damage for each of those. That's two. He's put down to four total health. We're then going to play our hack card here, giving ourselves plus one attack. That gives us a total of four attack. And we have our energy spear that we just drew, which is three more. So that's a total of seven. Seven minus three is four damage. Four damage and the two damage we did before. This guy's toast. Five XP for us. Thank you very much. Now I have three cards in hand. I could use two of them to do a burst of strength here, but I don't want to do that with any of these cards. Well, the Meditate would maybe be okay, but Point Blank and Kaith, it's too good for Mirabelle, so we're not gonna do that. Instead, we're just gonna move to the drafting phase, and I think Endurance is not a question. We're gonna spend three XP to do that. We'll do Prince Balm later, or Prince Balan, <laughs> when it's not Krolt's turn who has five damage. We'll then reveal our first artifact. We have the Gauntlet of Dark Iron. We'll put that right here. We're then going to discard these two cards, drawing up to eight. We have two already. Three, four, five, oh nice, six, seven, and eight. We'll move to the enemy activation. We're going to remove this tile. I'll place it at the bottom of the stack. Our first level three is over here. Oh, I wish I could take that one, but I can't. It's green. Oh, I don't need green anymore. I already paid to put it out on the table. <laughs> then we have this. That's not going to put out any enemies, so we'll just lose one XP that we could spend. And let's discard this one. Let's draw our next one. This one, oh, if we don't have any enemies out, it's not a problem. We're going to lose Assassinator, which is not a problem at all. 
Let's go ahead and activate Mirabelle next. Using her track card, she'll draw one card. We have our open hand attack. We're then going to spend two movement points to draw two more cards. We have counter strike, nice, and we have dark recall. <laughs> Lots of good cards. We'll then use our third movement to play that rapid fire so we can attack two different times, giving ourselves plus one attack. And you know that point blank card as well. We're then going to use both of these cards as a burst of strength to give ourselves one more movement point. So we have three movement left. We're going to spend two of the three movement points to move here and here. That means we can drop off the Naga uh, at this quest token, and that's one of our three level two or higher enemies. Then for our final movement point, let's look at what this Death Fairy looks like. Oh boy. She has seven dodge defense, seven health, seven movement, and seven attack. Lots and lots of sevens. Now, whenever you reveal a final enemy, you immediately have to draw the top card of her five card deck. This card is going to give you a couple pieces of information. The first one immediately happens now, the defense. Immediately place one death fairy adjacent to the queen. Each time the queen is damaged, reduce the damage by one if there is another death fairy within two spaces of her. <laughs> and she will attack, move until in range and within line of sight of one targeted hero. How the uh, final enemies work. If you're within two rooms, you potentially could get targeted by the final boss. I have tokens for each one of our heroes. I'm gonna randomly choose one each time the final enemy activates and it's going to do this, attack for seven, ow. We do have to remember that the Death Fairy will come out facing Mirabelle and we'll put another Death Fairy right here who has, what, four dodge defense and three health. Well, I think the first thing I'm going to do is send my pet Kate here for six attack to attack that Death Fairy, not the Death Fairy Queen, just the Death Fairy. The Death Fairy has four of the dodge defense, so it'll only do two damage to its total of three health. But now Mirabelle has plus one damage against this enemy. And looking at our cards, there is no way for us to even touch that Death Fairy Queen. So I think I'm just going to do my single attack. I could do two, but the second one's not going to do anything. I'm going to attack this Death Fairy. I'm dealing a total of two plus one, which is three plus two more, which is five. That is more than enough to take this Death Fairy out and we'll gain three XP and we'll remove this from the board. We now can draft a card, and this is going to change what I was thinking of doing. I am going to spend three plus one, which is four, and we're going to get that ivory chalice because that can let us remove wounds. I think we're going to be getting wounds real soon. We'll draw a new card to replace that, and we have King Titan. <gasps> oh, I want to hang out with King Titan because we have Minerva, his horse, or unicorn, I guess. We have six cards remaining in our hand. We're going to keep all of them, so I'm only going to draw up to two. We only have one card left in our deck. That's our Drain Vigor. And then I'm going to shuffle up the three cards in our discard pile, and we're going to grab Magic Bolt. Oh. Then let's go ahead and activate our enemies. From how I understand it, there are no enemies on the board because the final enemy will activate from her card. So we don't have to do any of this for the Death Fairy Queen. If that Death Fairy had been out, we would have, but we will lose this Assassinator card forever, which is fine by me. We're gonna have to discard Devastating Blow so we can always get it later. And we're gonna place out two new cards. We have the Winged Scepter and we have the Ancient Scroll of Doom. We're then going to flip over our next AI card. Okay, if we don't have enemies out on the board, we're going to lose an XP. Now we're going to determine who the Death Fairy Queen is going to attack. All of us are within range two tiles, so we're just going to shuffle these up like so. Uh, let's pick this one, number three. So number three is, okay, down here at the bottom, it tells us what number they are. So that's going to be Eminon. Eminon is going to be, initi or be attacked for seven attack. Uh, all death fairies within range three. We don't have to worry about that, but he's going to have to deal with a seven attack. The death fairy doesn't even have to move. All she's going to do is turn and attack for seven. We have three dodge defense, which means we'll take four wounds. However, we have a counter strike. We're going to add plus one to our dodge defense, and that's now going to be there for the rest of this round. You may play this card after an attack is made against you. Afterwards, you may inflict two automatic damage against the attacker. So we just dealt two damage to that queen. However, Eminon will still take three damage from that attack. 
I've got to say the inflict is super important against these bosses and you're going to see I'm not flipping the boss over. You can never exhaust the boss. Now we will discard this card and immediately draw a new one and we have Tangle. Each time that a hero moves to a space within three spaces of the queen, that hero must sustain one automatic damage and it cannot be reduced or ignored. <laughs> And she's not going to move. She's just going to attack for six. Oh, Mirabelle's standing right next to her. Oh, all heroes within three spaces too. Ouch. Let's have Eipsy go next. She has a total movement of four. She's going to move one, two, three. Now she's in within range three. So that means she's going to take one point of damage. She has three. She only has five health. Ouch. Now, if it had been Krolt that was getting attacked by that Death Fairy Queen, she probably would have laughed. But because it's Mirabelle and Emanon, and she kind of likes them, she's going to help them out. What do you say we play that Burning Desolation? That is six damage. We can divide it however we choose. Well, we're doing all of it on the Queen. And not only that, we can ignore the target's defense. There's nothing saying that we don't have to or we can't ignore the queen's defense. So yeah, that's going to take the queen out right there. Burning desolation for the win! With taking out that queen, we'll gain 7 experience. And now, what I'm not entirely sure, I am thinking though this is a level 2 or higher enemy. Can we use that for the monstrous hunt? I'm going to say yes. Because if we do, we're actually adjacent to it. That's our second one. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. But I, I feel like that is definitely a level 2 or higher enemy. <laughs> we're also going to gain 4 campaign tokens. And actually, we're going to spend 1 XP to make that 5. Because uh, Eipsy just killed a monster. We're then going to end our turn with a burst of strength using these two sideways just to heal one point of damage. So we're down to only two damage. Well, that was pretty fun. Taking out that final enemy, no problem. We're going to now move to the drafting phase, spend three experience, and we're going to draft King Titan. We'll replace that card with the Immortal White Lotus. When you finally come face to face with King Titan, whom history records as the Lord destined to become the Immortal Titan, you are surprised by his noble bearing. Will you speak with him? I know who you are and why you have come, but I am not the one whom you seek. A moment later, he collapsed on one knee, poisoned by treachery. If you take this moment to strike, consult card 39 and place the king's token in the same room as one of your heroes. If you defeat him, reward XP and gain 5. There's no way we're doing that. If we wish to help him, we're going to look at card 40. It is my lady, the queen, who has done this to me. She plans to have one of her allies become the immortal titan. To save the king, one of your heroes must play a card that removes wound tokens for no effect. Afterwards, gain four of the campaign tokens and choose either to place card 41 in your hand or erase it. You may instead see that the king dies peacefully, gain three and erase card 41. In either circumstance, erase story card 38 through 40. Well, you know we're going to help the King Titan. We have his unicorn. He's definitely a good person. Uh, we'll discard and draw, but we only have two cards in our deck, so we'll draw those up. We have Meditate and Endurance. You know, our hand size is only six, but only Eminon has not activated. We then would deal with our AI card. I'm not even going to worry about the tiles because we can't put any more out. No enemies, so we're just going to lose one XP here. And let's draw our next one. Our next card looks like we're losing the Immortal White Lotus. Uh, and just some enemies and I'm thinking well actually I have an idea here we go this is our final activation for this round we're going to activate Eminon first thing we're going to do dark recall and open hand attack we're going to play those upside down as a burst of strength so we have a total speed of six then we're going to use one speed for this meditate that normally would remove a wound token but instead we're going to remove the wound token from King Titan it states here, to save the king, one of your heroes must play a card that removes a wound token for no effect. Afterwards, we're going to gain four campaign tokens. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And choose either to place card 41 in your hand or erase it. No, we are definitely going to place card 41 into our hand. We now have the king titan and his unicorn as allies. Plus three or plus three, gain an additional plus two or plus two if you're attacking the titan or the dark empress. Ah, uh, yes, please. So I'll put that into our hand. Then we'll erase all of these cards. We still have five movement left. We'll use movement four and movement three to move here. We'll then use one of our movement for major healing. And we can remove up to four wounds from yourself or an adjacent ally. One, two, three, 
four. Yeah, I really did not want that poison to take effect. <laughs> Then we'll simply go ahead and play this treasure card. I can't get the wounds off of myself. I don't have enough movement, so I'll just gain a face down XP. I just really want it out of my hand. We'll then end our turn by drafting a card, and this Immortal White Lotus looks amazing. We're going to spend six experience points, but we're going to gain this and place this out on the table. It states, whenever one of your conscious heroes activates, she may remove up to two wounds from herself. Yeah, all of our heroes are wounded. They're not going to be so much after this. I'll then replace that with the Rod of Nullification. Okay, now we are, I mean, I could discard and draw, but I only have two cards in hand and no deck. I love this. I've been using all of my cards. I feel super, super powerful. <laughs> it's only the second adventure. We are going to lose forever the Rod of Nullification. That's fine. And we're going to discard this one. We'll replace both of these with the Void, and we have Inner Strength. And then, of course, we'd have enemies activate. There aren't any enemies on the board, so we can ignore that. Let's draw our next one. We have this one and this one. Okay, if we do not get any enemies on the board, we're going to have a hand size of three less cards. That'll end round three. Let's discard our cards, draw up to our hand size. I don't need to change the upgrade deck. There's no enemies on the board. I need to get one more enemy over here that's a level two or higher, so hopefully I can find one. If we do, we will get another three quest to, uh, tokens and five experience. Wow, that would be insane. We have two cards in hand, so we can draw up to six more. We've got major healing. We have the open hand attack. We have Drain Vigor, oh, we have Counter Strike, that's still not great, and we have Critical Strike, that is great. And of course I can't count, we get one more, and that's Point Blank. To start round four, let's activate Mirabelle first. So because we have the Immortal White Lotus, we can remove two damage from her. <laughs> that is ridiculous. We have a total movement of five. I'm going to do a burst of strength, spending this card, and let's do this drain vigor card so we're going to play both of those face down so we have a total movement of six if we look at this to become a dragonfly's disciple one of your heroes must spend a total of x movement x is equal to seven minus the number of primordial symbols so i have one so i only need six so i'm going to do that right now i'm going to spend all six of my movement Afterwards, place card 35 beside that hero, retain Dragonfly's story card for the rest of the campaign, and gain three more campaign tokens. Well, you know, I don't feel like I have enough. <laughs> Let's gain some more. We now have the Disciple of Dragonfly. This is a trait card. Each hero can have one trait. And if I decide to keep this card, I actually will uh, play this out on Mirabelle to start with. It says, when you gain this card, place it face up beside one of your heroes. When you activate this specific hero, draw one card. Oh, still pretty cool though. We'll then move to drafting. I actually only have four XP I can use. I'm going to use three of them to draft Brent, uh, the Prince Balan. And we'll replace that card with Vengeful, another trait card. And I do want to mention the Void here. It specifically states that you cannot draft this card during uh, unless it's your final campaign adventure. So we're going to have to wait two more before we can deal with the Void. You meet Prince Balan of House Titan as he cuts down several monsters that are assaulting Titan Keep. Wiping the blood from his axe, he turns to you with a look of suspicion in his eyes. Ooh, he does look suspicious. The Queen has asked me to lend my strength to power the immortal Titan. My vitality will abide within it forever. Oh boy, we need to get rid of him. We don't like the Queen. To test the Prince's strength in battle, yes, consult card 27 and place his enemy token in the same room as one of your heroes. If you defeat him, retain the story card for the rest of the campaign and we gain four, or we gain XP and four campaign tokens. We could also do a non-combat option. I want an enemy. I want to take him out. Here we have Prince Balan's card. He has prodigious strength. Eight attack, two armor, three move, eight health. Any target damaged by Balan is knocked down and cannot move or attack. To stand up, the target must perform a burst of strength. Oh my goodness. I'm going to place him right here, and I'm also realizing this is an even-numbered round. I have Eipsy and Krolt in two different rooms, so I gain another campaign token. I have 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 campaign tokens right now. 
we can discard and draw. I'm going to discard open hand attack and I can draw. I have five cards in my hand, so I can draw three. We have the Dark Recall for six, we have Magic Bolt for seven, and we have Burning Desolation for eight. Now though, the fun happens. Oh boy. This Prince is going to attack. He's the only enemy out. He's already ready. He's going to attack for nine, and he can either attack uh, Eminon or Krolt. We're going to have the Prince attack Krolt for nine damage. Now, Krolt has two armor, so he will take seven wounds. Wow. But uh, he's also knocked over. Fortunately, he isn't going to be dead. He's just going to, you know, be one away from dead. That is nine damage. Thank goodness Eminon healed him, or he would have been killed right there. <laughs> oh boy. Let's now draw our next solo AI card. And this one, okay, maybe we can take out that enemy so we don't have to deal with this. And with King Titan's help, I think we can. King Titan knows that uh, Prince Balan is going to help the queen, which is bad. We don't want that. So Krolt is going to activate. We will remove two wounds from him thanks to our immortal white lotus. We're going to spend both Magic Bolt and Counter Strike here. We're going to play those face down as a burst of strength just so we can stand up. That means we need to deal a total of 10 damage if we want to take him out. Oh, and I should have flipped him over. He should be exhausted. There we go. First thing we are going to do is play our Endurance card. We're a dwarf. We'll get plus two to our armor. You may remove up to three wound tokens on yourself. Yeah, bring it on. That'll put us down to only having four wounds. Then we are going to attack. Our attack value is three. We are going to have King Titan help us. He's going to give us plus three. We don't get the additional plus two, but that's six. We're then going to do two more with our critical strike. That's eight. And then don't forget that Prince Balan has armor. We're going to reduce it to zero. So eight and a zero armor means we just took him out. That will gain us four more campaign tokens. And we will remove these story cards. Prince Balan's car will go into our stack of cards. Yeah, that felt pretty good. And five XP plus the one that we have here. We have now six to spend. I don't love these options that I see here. So what I'm going to do is discard inner strength, I think. And we're going to replenish it with the obsidian wand. We can do that because we have three, four, five, six. And that was only a four cost. We could buy this. Eh, I don't think I'm going to do that yet. We're then going to keep the remaining cards in our hand. We'll draw one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We get one more, eight. Oh, we could do some healing. Yeah, looks pretty good. We'll move to the AI card. The only thing that matters is we're going to discard this one and we're going to remove this one from the game. We'll replenish them with the Cloak of the Guardian and the Staff of Teleportation. We'll then draw our next AI card. Okay, no problem if there's no enemies on the board. And with this, I've got two more heroes to activate. I don't really see anything else that I want to do. So I'm going to look at the draft area. I'm going to see if I want to draft anything. Then I will replenish it one time if not. And then I think we're just going to end this video. This was awesome though. We took out the final enemy. And I think having King Titan on our side, it's really fun to see how this story is going. And looking at the cards that we have here, I think spending 5 XP for the Cloak of the Guardian seems kind of awesome. It states, whenever one of your heroes takes damage, reduce the damage by two. This does not prevent damage from the enemy heroes or prevent poison damage during the end phase. But whoa, that would be amazing. I'll go ahead and replenish that. And I've got the Mantle of the Lion. I will now only have one XP. So I don't think there's anything else that I'm going to buy. I think that'll just end the game. So now I have the fun part of deciding what to keep with all of those campaign tokens. Well, you guys, Yipsy was standing right next to that Eldritch portal. I totally should have done that. That would have gained me at least one, maybe even two more campaign tokens. Ah, but I didn't. That's the one disadvantage of recording. <laughs> you get a little tired at the end. So I apologize for missing that, but I still feel like we went pretty well here. 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 campaign tokens. And look at all these cards we're keeping. King Titan, Cloak of the Guardian. So this will be out in play at the beginning of our next scenario. Energy Spear, that'll be great for Krolt. Actually, he's the only one that can use that. Disciple of Dragonfly, that will be on Mirabelle. So every time I activate her, I get to draw a card. 
major healing. Felt like healing would be good since I didn't keep the healing artifact. And I was kicking myself last time I didn't keep the critical strike. Thanks, Eon, for pointing that out. <laughs> really should have. Uh, so this time, I'm keeping it. So those are our 20 campaign tokens spent. Plus, of course, we have our Burning Desolation, our Kaith, our Bronze Golem, and Minerva. <gasps> Minerva and King Titan. I love it. Hopefully you enjoyed the playthrough. Thank you so much as always for watching. Thank you, Andrew, for also watching and commenting. It gets me excited to play the game more. I am excited for Adventure 3. I am going to record back to back, so that means if I made any errors here, I am probably not going to catch them for the next video. But I'm not going to be sad about playing more of this game. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you at the next stop.